Washington, D.C. We're starting at the Metro Center, heading to DuPont Circle to check out another picturesque neighborhood of our nation's capital. Let's jump into the train on the red line and head over to DuPont. Join me for a wander around to allow beautiful customers Washington, D.C. When boarding, please move to the center of the car. This is the rear seat. no history today. I couldn't find too much stories in uh, these two neighborhoods. There's a few, but they're, they're really like kind of micro niche history. So today we're just mostly going to wander around these neighborhoods and enjoy what they're about. And yes, it's very, very clean. Is it chillier in DC? Oh, it is. It's chillier and rainy. You're about to see. I came very under covered. I didn't, I didn't think I would need a jacket to get over here. So here we're in the Farragut North stop on the red line. Doors so opening on the left. Stand clear of the closing doors, please. That's what she meant. Uh, Pete Griffin says it's not as it's as loud as NYC's um, subway. It might sound that way through the microphone, but from my personal experience being here, right here, right here in person, it sounds less loud. It doesn't sound too loud. Not much people on the metro says it's me. Yeah, it's me. Not that many people on the metro. Unlike New Yorkers who go out and bunch on Sunday. Indeed, especially to specific neighborhoods. 80 one day and 50 the next year. Well, it's 44 degrees Fahrenheit, which is already coat weather. So, Bench Review. Oh, you guys want to know? I already, said, I already spoke a little bit about the seats in the Metro. Seats in the Metro are very comfy. They're nice and plush. They're le they're kind of like a leather or faux leather. I can't really tell. And uh, thus, no risk of bed bugs, unlike other trains in other cities. And um, yeah, it's comfy. It's a, it's a good it's a good train seat. I would give it a good review. This is a good train to take to the last stops. Though I'm not entirely sure what is there to see in the last stops. Are there any major sites on last stops on these trains? Let me know. I know Alexandria is pretty popular. If there are any other ones. Right now, we're arriving at DuPont Circle. Let's get out. Oh yeah. Hello, Judith. Move to the center of the car. This 
so once again, here are the vaulted ceilings of the DC Metro. Looks similar to the vaulted ceilings of the Pantheon in Rome, actually, like a very modern version of it. Vaulted ceilings is a technology innovated, I think, by the Romans first. Maybe the Greeks did a little bit of it. So it has that unique aesthetic, and let me zoom in a little bit. It's amazing. So just in case you rode the, the metro a little bit longer than expected, you can get an emergency exit card right over here, but it's cash only. So carry cash whenever you are in DC. And my wallet weren't ready because the card is inside my wallet and I can easily just tap out. Though it's not really necessary to have a Metro uh, card. They call it a smart trip card here. Not necessary, you know why? Because you can take buses for free. Mm -hmm. Whoa. I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It's such a beautiful bright light of a foggy Washington DC. The humidity causing a bone chilling cold rising from the dark metro into the foggy surface above. What shall we find in the light at the end of the tunnel? Let me know in the comments. Shall we find redemption? Shall we find resolution? Or shall we find donuts? Maybe all three. Resolute, redemptive donuts out beyond the light. Being born from the subway, says Manolito. Yes, we are coming out of the womb of the DC Metro. This is about four stories underground. I think a little even more. So. And Elisa says, please take a photo if possible. Yes, I'll take, I'll take a few photos of the Metro. I already have a few photos lined up, so I'm gonna post like a photo set soon. Welcome, not to heaven, but to DuPont Circle, followed by Adams Morgan. So let me show you how it looked from the opposite direction. And here, we are in the neighborhood of DuPont. Dustin says, interesting fact, the cards can only be used once to get in and once to get out. Once you're in, you can't hand it to a guest behind you to swipe it. Yeah, you can't do that like you could do in New York. Nope, it's not possible. So this is an interesting coffee shop look to it. It says Phil's, kind of in squiggly old school writing. This is interesting. Is this like a chain from California? Does it have like a Californian flag? Let me know if anyone... It's from Cali. You know, it's Phil's Coffee, a uh, Californian chain. Ooh, I find it by the lights. <laughs> Such a good song. All right. 
So, as with all my wanderings, if you're new to Urbanist, I sometimes do tours where I show you specific sites that I plan ahead of time. And then the other type of tours I do is I wander around. No direction, no agenda, and no plan. Aimlessly wandering the beautiful streets of cities across the world. So ditch the Google Maps, ditch trying to find your way around, just embrace the views. And then maybe later you can take a map and maybe try to retrace my steps if you would like. Lori says, how are you today? Did you have a nice dinner? Oh, yes, I did. Yesterday, I ate a French restaurant. I actually ordered it to go because of it. it was getting too cold at night. So I ordered it to go pick up and it was a burger. And oh, wow, it was one of the best burgers I've ever had, <laughs> to be honest. And I'm going to put it in my DC food list. What is this? Connecticut Avenue Lookout. With the coming election, says Dustin, uh, what is the feel of the D.C. metro area this time of year? I've never been in D.C. during election season. I've only been in uh, New York during election season. Um, most election seasons are just a normal day. Uh, I think this election season might be a normal day, hopefully. I would just be a little bit cautious, planning a trip in, in second, third, fourth week of November. though this is not a news show and I'm not a journalist, so uh, that is just my personal feeling on the matter. So let's see what's down here. Hey, Elisa, you listen to some go-go music. Oh, cool, a lot of people are listening to go-go music. Such a great form of music. French pastry. Je ne sais quoi. All the streets meet up in the middle of DuPont. Yes, DuPont is one of those main circles in Washington, D.C. There's a lot of spokes off the DuPont wheel. It's not quite like Paris where there's one main wheel, which is center at the Arc de Triomphe. Though we do have a main uh, area, I think it's, yeah, the US capital is the main, the center point, like the Arc de Triomphe in Paris. Uh, but there's various other spokes here. Other wheels, I mean, that have spokes. You stopping anywhere to eat? Maybe, maybe today's a wander, so yeah. Good chances are that we at least uh, try something. It's a rainy day, yeah it is. Elisa is in intensive care right now. Elisa, do feel better. Here's the halal guys, a little piece of New York in the middle of DC. A lot of guys are famous for their food carts in 53rd Street and 6th Avenue. And they have storefronts all around, I think, America now and internationally as well. Hey, a tiny little Osteria over here. Oh, that's cool. Osteria is an Italian restaurant, basically. Cold too? Whew. It's cold, it's foggy, no matter how I put my mask on my lenses. Uh, I did not bring a jacket because I, I saw the weather and it said it was going to be 70s the entire way through. I did not think that it would get below 50 and today is about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's pretty cold, yeah. 
Ooh, cool historic building. You have a nice Asian grill nearby. I heard, yeah, this one has good reviews, Nero. The Mad Hatter Bar. Oh, nice name for a bar. Oh, Middle Eastern chain. I've seen a few of these around DC. Munchies. <laughs> they made the word munchies like uh, when you get the munchies after smoking uh, in order to make it look a little bit more Middle Eastern. That's funny. Hi, como esta ka, Ronald? Nice to see you here. So I'm actually going the opposite direction. I gotta turn so we can uh, go to Adams Morgan. So let's check out the statue and then go the other way around. Hey Kim, you love my tour the other night. Oh, I'm so glad. Oh, I'm so glad. Do we try Ethiopian food today? I don't think there's any major Ethiopian food places in this particular area. This is John Witherspoon from Scotland, 1794. All right, let me turn around. Let's go back up DuPont because this would be going southern bound, which is more towards where the DC mall is located. And uh, I don't know, you're watching a simultaneous live with me and, uh, and Tom Delgado and Sarah Funk. Oh, cool. U Street is the best place for Ethiopian food. Oh, awesome, Kristen. I was a little bit disappointed that Dukum yesterday was closed during the daytime for restaurant service. Hello, Tosio. Hey, Babo, como esta ca? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have a lot of Filipinos tuning in. That's awesome. Welcome, everyone. There's also a, a burgeoning Filipino food scene here in DC as well. Similar to Queens, New York, where Filipino food is prominent in Woodside. Here, there's a few neighborhoods that also have a lot of Filipino food and higher end Filipino food as well. So there's some exciting developments here, not just in Ethiopian, but in other ethnic foods. All right. Any Germans in the chat? Oh, I don't know. Are there any Germans in the chat? Hip City Veg, a vegetarian chain. Washington DC has a lot of like new chains walking around. Purple Patch is highly recommended from the net. Ooh, what are you referring to? Hold on. Oh, the, the, the restaurant Purple Patch. Okay, cool. Thank you for the recommendation. Virginia is also watching New York City Social Butterfly. Awesome. And Virginia, the person, not the state. <laughs> We're close to the state as well. Virginia, have you ever been to Virginia? Curious. It's all like spacious in DC, says Manolito. Yes, it is. It's very spacious. And due to its spaciousness, 
I think the reason there is no concentration of neighborhoods is because there's no clear demarcations of grids uh, within the seat uh, within the city. So it's not like New York City where we have a few double-sided streets, set amount double-sided streets, like double-width streets. I mean, like 57th, 42nd, 34th. That functions as a demarcation point. Also, you have avenues that also function as markers and bigger, more vibrant avenues that are a little bit more, um, more business. So that case in New York City, even though Manhattan is a grid, since the grid does have these clear kind of defining points to it, there is a development of neighborhoods. But here, not so much, as, uh, uh, except for the neighborhood we're specifically going to right now, which is Adams Morgan, one of the few neighborhoods, like Georgetown as well, that has a clear kind of border. But otherwise, if you go around, people are gonna refer uh, to an area from the street, not so much according to the neighborhood. So yesterday, I said that we were going to the Cardozo neighborhood, though I think most people don't use that term. They use the term U Street. The streets are empty, yes, yeah, it's, it's very quiet over here. Because it's very quiet and considering it's getting it's very foggy uh, because of uh, the high humidity and very cold weather, I'm going to walk around without a mask. Uh, but I will stay as far as away from people as possible until I go inside the store and I'll put on a mask once again. So here we just walked down the southern area of DuPont, but that'll be going towards the mall. The highlight of today's trip is going north of the mall. So let's check it out. But before, let's see this fountain. Ooh, cool. This memorial fountain replaces a statue erected by the Congress of the, what does it say? The United States of America, all right? In recognition, okay, okay. We were getting, we're going to know what it says. I'm reading the bottom. In recognition of his distinguished service. But then tell me who. Joe says, good old DuPont Circle and Adams Morgan, a place of my youth. My father used to sit with me at the fountain of DuPont Circle when I went to school at John Adams on 19th Street. All right, in honor of you, Joe, who just tuning in, will take a nice little seat in this wet bench to give honor to you and your father on those very days before school. Right here, that's cool, Joe. Thank you so much for sharing that experience. That's awesome. Uh, it, it's, a, it, it's truly wonderful that you can go to a city and cities are not just only filled with landmarks and with uh, history that is written in textbooks or, or in awesome, you know, other types of books. It's not just tourist sites, but cities are also very personal experiences for people who have either come here in certain trips, who have visited loved ones, who have pursued a significant other, or have grown up here. It's so wonderful. Let's continue walking around. A wet bench is a whole different experience. Yep, it's a, luckily I wear black pants for that reason. So I can sit on wet benches just in case. You never know when the opportunity might arise that one needs to sit on a wet bench. Joe says, thank you, my pleasure, Joe. Hi, Tickle from LA. Nice to see you here. Let's cross, we got 12 seconds. Will we make it? across this empty, empty area of the city. <laughs> it's very, very empty today. I passed through here before. Today we're going to venture a little bit further into the neighborhood. 
unlike the other time. It's a very cool tent. The tent has a house plant. So DC is being hit very hard by the pandemic. Uh, not in terms of, luckily, not in terms of deaths or cases in COVID. Crossing fingers, that, that remains to be the case. Um, but unfortunately, economically. economically. And uh, a lot of people hit hard, have been moving to their own tents. And that person is doing their best by having a house plant. Gotta give it, give it up to them. All right, let's continue walking around. Gloomy here. Yep. Oh, it's gloomy over there in LA. Oh, that's a rarity. All right, so let me see. There. Oh, Fuku is supposed to open up here. Momo, it's from Momofuku in New York City. So another piece of New York is supposed to open up here. Do I leave Washington, D.C. today or tomorrow? Tomorrow will be the last tour. I leave on Tuesday, but uh, pretty early on Tuesday. So Monday, 1 p.m. One more final tour in Washington, D.C. Tomorrow. We are going, going back to a little bit more history. So here's Kramer's Books. This is one of the more popular bookstores in Washington, D.C. Very popular. Let's check it out. What I just showed was Kramer Books, and I won't go inside because uh, it's a very kind of packed place, but I uh, saw the reviews for their breakfast. I think it's closed, but it's called All Day Kramer's, and they're known for their breakfast because they serve it all day, and it's a very popular place. Here's Firehook Bakery. So this is a bakery we saw the other day. This one is also a chain because I already saw a few of them. As I keep mentioning, there's a lot of chains in DC. A lot, a lot of chains. Let's take just a peek inside. Yeah, typical bakery. Doesn't strike me as anything really stand out. Hey, Maria from Slovakia, Europe. My son lives in DC. Oh, so cool. Hi, it says love language. Oh, was the book in front? The five love languages? Great book. Absolutely love that book. Learned so much from it. Tran, do you like that bakery, Tran? Do you recommend it? Is there any book shops and antique stores? Antique, uh, I'm not entirely sure. There's definitely bookstores. Kramer's was one of them, Elisa. There should be a, a few others. Here's a farmer's market. Oh, cool. We bumped this a farmer's market. Yes. They're already part packing up so early. Farmer's market is closed early. Sam, one more day tomorrow. Fresh eggs, oh cool. Huh. Hmm. 
Oh, cool. So Tran recommends Firehouse Weaker. He likes it. Cool. Thank you, Tran. CBD stand at the farmers market. That's interesting. So lots of fall produce here: pumpkin, squash. Hey, Sylvia from Argentina. Bienvenidos. Estamos ahora en Washington D.C. Mirando todas las tiendas bonitas en esta área. We're watching the DC. Seeing all the stores. Hey, Ian, sure thing. Hey, Keith, welcome to Washington, D.C. Hope you can visit soon. Um, the city is waiting for you. So welcome, Keith, to Washington, D.C. Also, I want to give a shout out to Kay from Ireland. Uh, she's been unable to watch these past few days due to personal reasons. Uh, she basically watches every single episode. So uh, everyone, send Kay your love some parts. Uh, she's a hardcore urbanist. Literally has watched every single video I've done. Probably the most impressive thing I've ever heard because I make very long videos. So that's, I uh, hope you're doing well. Let's find out what else can we see in this neighborhood. Yeah, so this is the corner building. Do they call this Dupont Circle? Yes, I think I am speculating, but I've heard from a few locals already call it Dupont Circle, the neighborhood. So, yes. Wasn't there a Books a Million bookstore around here? Victor, I don't know. I'm not a DC local, so I don't know. If anyone knows where Books a Million was, or if it's still here. Virginia, I usually watch your videos during lunch hour at work. May missing so many of your great videos. Maybe you can get a TV show? Lois, I would love to work for TV. I'm excited to work for TV at some point. Maybe Netflix, Amazon Prime, History Channel, Discovery, BBC. I would love to work for TV. So. TV producers, anyone who's watching, feel free to hit me up. You'll see me on TV at some point. There was a book a uh, million a few years ago. Interesting, thank you, Kristen. So there was a store here a few years ago. Where it is, we don't know, but look at this corner building, another interesting structure. Beautiful. And there's a secondhand store right here called Second D. Great name. Co Simon clothing store there in the second floor. Do I work in corporate? No more adventure. I'm a freelance filmmaker. There's a tea house. Let's check this out. Ooh, tea house. I like tea houses. I like seeing tea houses. Let's see what this tea house is all about. <laughs> oh, they have outdoor seating. So this place is full, tea house. And um, Sarah Funk just mentioned me on her channel. Oh, cool, what did she say? That's awesome. And I think I've heard of Tsum, yeah. 
yeah, seems full. Well, uh, a few people out there. <laughs> full, comparatively speaking, you know, it is the pandemic, and uh, it seems like this this area is a little bit more quieter during Sundays. So maybe Adams Morgan is a little bit different. Let's continue walking. You should be the new Anthony Bourdain, says Sean. I cannot pretend to even replace Anthony Bourdain. He was his own unique individual and very talented in his own way. And I'm very different from Anthony Bourdain in my opinion, but um, I will be gladly open to making a shpucho. But it won't be an Anthony Bourdain style food show, it will be my own style. Digging the red jacket today, says Bernard. Oh, cool, Bernard. I'm glad you are. Had to button up because I didn't know I need to use a jacket for DC. So I didn't pack a jacket. Today is coat weather, it's not sweater weather. Lots of good brunch places around here. Also good ethnic restaurants. Oh, cool, says Victor. So Victor, awesome. Let me know, do you have any recommendations for Ethiopian food around here? Liz says, bento boxes, udon soup is around here as well. And yes, the Red Jack is becoming. Oh, thank you. Okay, this is a wonderful area. Yeah. That place has a strong Asian menu. He is a mo cool. Good to know. Do I miss New York when I travel? Not unless if it's more than a month. But I must admit, since um, DC is very, very quiet right now during this pandemic and this person is uh about to run the red light yep yep she's running the red light um since dc is very quiet right now almost no museum is open and i don't feel comfortable sitting inside restaurants plus it being cold right now today and cold during the nights this is just not much to do. And uh, I, feel, I do feel like I, I miss uh, my comfy bed and just kind of reading in New York City <laughs> at home. At this moment, uh, yesterday, that's when I uh, started feeling that. Let me know how you feel when you travel. So we're entering Embassy Row again. We're gonna take a nice little detour before we go into Adams Morgan. Check out the Spanish steps. But no, not the ones in Rome. Another different set of Spanish steps. Here's the Embassy of Mali. Oh, cool. It's definitely not like Boston. Boston, yeah, Boston had a little bit more life to it. Every city is different. But to kind of uh, enjoy more idle time, Boston was a, a better city for that than DC. DC, there's not much opportunity to idly enjoy time if the most of the museums are closed, which is the case. Here's the, 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 the La República de Argentina. Right here, the Republic of Argentina Embassy. Four K says it's hard to miss your home city when you're enjoying traveling. Exactly, exactly. You're not allowed to sit on the Spanish steps anymore. No, you're, and not in Rome, not anymore. So where is, are these Spanish steps? Let's check it out. Where are they at? Here, police.
Who's this guy? Brazilian Aeronautical Commission. Oh, cool. Uh, this is the Brazilian embassy. What's with the alarm? I don't know. Someone broke into one of the embassies. <laughs> I'm joking. I don't know. Uh, but maybe. Because it has happened before. So it has happened before. Embassies have been broken into. Specifically, the Russian embassy was broken into, I think it was the 1960s, uh, because there was a mole in one of the agencies. And then uh, during World War II, also, one of the embassies were broken into. Um, but my memory is a little bit fuzzy on that. I'm not 100% sure, so do your own research. Here's the embassy of La República Dominicana, Dominican Republic. How long will your lives be in the winter? Oh, I don't know. I'll be, I'll be in New York in the winter. I don't know. I truly don't know what I'll be able to do in New York in the winter. Not, nothing really indoors, that's for sure. Hyde says, always be aware of your surroundings. I am. I'm a very aware individual. Here are the Spanish steps. It's like a slight, I assume it's a slight reference to Rome, but they're called the Spanish steps because they're the steps to the Spanish embassy. Yeah, pretty much that's it. Kathy says, you ha always have great stories to tell. Oh, I'm glad. Let's walk the Spanish steps. Elisa says, when I travel, every time is a new dimension, like a new life, new identity. Oh, yes. That's a good way to travel. I like that. Ian, recommend you head south on Metro to Alexandria. Oh, Ian, I already did that a few days ago. Great city. Probably one of my top places in the D.C. area. Really loved Alexandria. Highly recommend it. Hello there, Teresa. Hello, Václav. So these are the Spanish steps in Washington, D.C. They're steps to the Spanish embassy. Or the steps slippery, not these ones, no. Not slippery. Uh, though there are a lot of leaves, so if you're coming here in fall, do mind the falling leaves. They can get slippery. And here you have an interesting view. If it was winter time, we would be able to see the monument that's right down there, though I can't really make it out from this distance, if anyone knows what we're looking at. Because I've seen... I searched on... Instagram and I saw like a spattering of wedding photos here. Are you going to make a wish? I don't have a coin. I don't have a coin, unfortunately. No, there are no coins in here either. I don't think anyone has made a wish here. Magnolia tree to your left. All right, let's see which one. Magnolia to my left. This one? Ian says, wonderful. Didn't know these steps existed. Great tip. Oh, I'm so glad you're enjoying them. Yeah, this is a gorgeous photo spot. Oh, yeah. Fall time, you see the leaves turning color, or you can come here in winter and see the view a little bit clearer. Don says, in order to make a wish when you have no coins is to just toss your credit card. <laughs> Good idea, Don. Good idea. <laughs> it's the combination of the Spanish steps and the Trevi Fountain. Oh, yeah. So I think this is the Spanish Embassy. 
Oh, this is a story. Okay, so I misremembered. Yes. Now I remember the story. So I read this in the Spy Secrets of Washington, D.C. book. It's one of my resources. World War II, Spain was neutral. And Spain, being neutral, kept the Americans. I have lots of echo here. Whoa. Why is there echo here? That's weird. Is it because of the wall behind this? It kept the Americans in suspense. Because if they allowed the Spanish, if they allowed the Germans, the Axis powers, to gain control of Spanish Morocco, they could have, it would have been easier for them to unleash an attack in other African powers and also potentially across the Atlantic Ocean in order to in, make a land invasion or at least a naval invasion of the U.S. So it was a very precarious position. And of course, a lot of people know a little bit about Spain during World War II was going through a civil war. And one of the men in power was the fascist, Franco. So Franco was very close in supporting the Germans. And uh, it quite didn't work out because I think uh, Germany wasn't quite uh, offering enough in return. So the Americans decide to take some intelligence operations into their own hands. The OSS, run by William Donovan, who we learned about in Rockefeller Center, it was started in Rockefeller Center, uh, so look, look at my broadcast there from about two months ago, ends up breaking in to the Spanish Embassy. It's one of these buildings, so one of these buildings. It could be this one, I think it is this one, yeah. It's this yellow brick one. Breaks into during the middle of the night. However, the OSS agents are greeted by a slew of police. Someone called the cops on them, and they, could, they couldn't reveal themselves fully, so they were arrested, and they were saying, I'm FBI, I'm FBI, and they didn't believe them. They were sent to the county jail. Then, they end up realizing that the reason they were called the cops on was because inside the Spanish embassy, there was another American intelligence operation. This time it was internal. The FBI was actually building an entire intelligence operation. They had moles working as Span Spanish embassy operatives, as Spanish embassy um, workers for months. So they, they, they weren't communicating correctly, the OSS and the FBI right inside here. And William Donovan was a very powerful man in the intelligence operations here in the in US and abroad and also a very powerful military man. And he had a phone call directly with uh, President Roosevelt and said, you treat our OSS agents worse than you would treat a German intelligence operative, which they had some names starting with the S. <laughs> he was really pissed off. And he was expressing his anger towards uh, Teddy Roosevelt, or to Franklin Delano Roosevelt. After that, I think that's why they end up streamlining the intelligence operations and making the CIA and the FBI making a clear demarcation between international intelligence and internal intelligence. Hello, Grievous. Maria, our raid did Georgetown two days ago. Check it out. Ariel, you, here you have a bag full of coins, says Elisa. Thank you, Elisa. I appreciate it. What do you think about Kahib? Kabib? Uh, I don't know what Kabib is. If, or if you're referring to the poet Khalid, Hebron, I love him. If you're referring to the food, Kabab, I love it as well. But maybe you're referring to something else. Interesting channel, says Grievous. Oh, thank you, Grievous. Big Kevin from Kentucky. Welcome. War was not always fought on the battlefield. Nope. War was not always fought on the battlefield. Sometimes it's fought 
in the office of politicians or clandestine operations with spies. People think when you talk about spies, it's mostly fiction, that James Bond is a complete work of imagination from some very creative individual. But Ian Fleming, even the man who wrote James Bond, wrote based on personal experiences. So clandestine operations happen all the time, anywhere where we look. Great walk, dude, says Wayne. Cool, man. Thank you so much for tuning in. B. Griffin, you're back. Awesome. What's with the sphere? I don't know. It's an interesting sphere, but this is the embassy of Costa Rica. Georgetown or Capitol Hill? What do you like most? I like Georgetown. Georgetown was really cool in terms of the food scene, coffee. Georgetown just offers a whole lot. Capitol Hill is nice and quiet, but Georgetown offers way more in terms of food, drink, and shops. Loving the architecture. Me too. Absolutely loving the architecture. Hey, Elaine, nice to see you here. Where are you going to be eating today? I don't know. I do not know. It is cold, so I won't be eating inside. That's for sure. Anton, I appreciate that you stream so often nowadays. Oh, I'm so glad you do. These are special trips where I do more streams than usual. Once I'm back in New York, it will be Wednesdays and Saturdays. Many row houses. Yeah, yeah, many row houses. So this is the embassy area. I think this neighborhood is called Calamara, if I'm correct. Or Calorama, Calorama. Oh, what is this? The embassy of the Republic of Albania. Albania has the coolest flag. I just must say, red, black, it looks like really like a Game of Thrones family. Manolito, yes, I pointed out the Argentinian embassy before, uh, just uh, go back 10 minutes if you want to see a glimpse of it. Mary, what time? Wednesdays and Thursdays, 1 p.m. Eastern time. No worries, Manolito. Yeah, always, you can always look at the replay. Shall we go? This is beautiful. Okay, so crossing the street and then taking the next right. Okay, cool. Hey, AG, AJ, welcome. Bisha, AJ, Bisha, welcome. Let's see here. The Russian house. Restaurant and lounge. You can buy some authentic Russian food. Some borscht. Stravaganov. Every time I read the word Stragonov, it sounds like a Soviet dictator to me. Great, great dish, great cuisine. Here's Andrei Skaharov. Andreas Skaharov. Pardon my Russian. 
I could use some borscht right now. All right, let's. Habibi, Habibi. This is Elisa. Um, I haven't seen anything Arab related here. I mean, there's not too much here in uh, Washington, D.C. Now we're walking uphill. So we do, this way you can visit the Woodrow Wilson house. <laughs> I laugh because I don't know who would want to, precisely. It's a very, probably not our best president. And Adams Morgan is this way. Let's go Adams Morgan. Also this way is the zoo. B. Griffith, that was the guy who wrote Gulag Archipelago. Oh, interesting. Thank you for letting us know, B. Griffith. Oh, this is a fun Italian restaurant. Look at this. Luca di Repo. Look at the decorations inside. Super Italian. Or Italian American. <laughs> That's funny. Hi from North Carolina. Welcome, Roslyn. You have some dollars? AJ, why are you asking, AJ? If anyone has any questions about my travels to DC, my experience traveling here, feel free to ask. I can try to answer most history questions, so if you have any history questions as well, I'll do my best to answer them. Kathy, will I be able to do a tour of my Airbnb? No, but what I'm going to do is uh, put a link to it. I'm not going to do a video tour, but I will show, share my link. The reason I won't be able to do a tour is because some Airbnbs are owned by companies, like the one in Boston. And some of my are inside a private residence. The one I'm saying is, is inside a private residence. So I won't be sharing it. Yeah. Yeah, just to respect the privacy of the Airbnb. But if I, if I stay, next time I stay in an in a Airbnb that's a, owned by a public company, or not public company, but company. I will, I will do tours of it. Hey, Umir asks, do I travel all the around the world? I do my best to travel all around the world. Yep, my intention is to travel all around the world. It's a bit hard right now. But yeah, I travel all around the world. What is... Oh, this is ringing. What do you think about India? I love India. Beautiful country. Haven't been there yet, but uh, I love the food. At least the American. Where would you recommend to eat in DC? My favorite area to eat thus far. Uh oh, a bomb is about to go off in this uh, scooter. Let's get away. My favorite neighborhood to eat by far has been Georgetown. Great, great food, dessert, coffee, some great casual bites as well. The restaurants looked, looked very beautiful. So that is my top recommendation by far. A specific place, if you want something very kind of weird, the Donut fried chicken sandwiches of Astro Donuts right by the mall is really good. Right by the National Mall. Did you notice a lot of scooters here? Oh, a whole lot. 
there is a lot of scooters. I think there's like four or five companies. One of them is Lyft, the other one is Lime, and there's a few others. There's also a few bike companies like this one, Jump. I think it's an electric bike. Yeah, it's an electric bike. Georgetown has great food indeed. A little expensive for my Argentinian pocket. Yeah. Manolito, budget eats are very hard to find here from my personal experience this past week. I've come here with family about six times before when I was younger. And yeah, I think this is not a easy city to find budget food. That's not major fast food chains. But if anyone knows otherwise, please do let us know where could you find good budget eats. Have they have a signature dish in Washington? Not really. The most signature thing I've had was the half smoke yesterday, which was a chili cheese dog in Ben's Chili Bowl, which is a bit signature of the African-American neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Mumbo sauce is probably the most signature thing you'll hear. It's basically like a sweet barbecue sauce. Chinatown has a couple of cheap places, but yeah, compared to Manhattan, not quite. Yeah, I haven't checked out Chinatown yet. It seems so small. It was like only a block. So it didn't seem like it had too much options, but that might be the best place to go. Chinatown's usually are the best places to go for budget eats. B. Griffin says best budget eats in New York City. Yeah, New York City has a bunch of budget eats. Not so much here in DC. Manolito, you're traveling in April and had a lot of places in the story and Jackson Heights written down. Yeah, Jackson Heights is amazing. Favorite restaurant in DC is the Old Ebbet Grill. Oh, interesting, Paul. Awesome, what do you like about it? They eat yet? No, haven't, haven't bumped into food. I'm not sure, I'm not sure what, what, what's around here. I was hoping for a thriving neighborhood, but not quite. Some buses at least. There's a 7-Eleven over here. That's nice. Look at the penthouse. Okay. Which one is the penthouse? This one? A little bit more brutal. Mm, beautiful, beautiful buildings here though. So for architecture, this is a nice area. Not sure about food. Maybe I'm on the right, wrong block. So this is California Road. No, sorry. Columbia Road. This is Columbia Road. Time to get slushy. <laughs> it is pretty cold, so. Literal slush might form. Is there a downtown with slopes and so on? Georgetown is, I think, your best bet for thriving food scene and lots of people hanging out, out and about. Yeah, here, here it's, a, it's a bit quiet. It's a bit of a sleepy area, at least on a Sunday. There's benches, oh yeah, but they're all wet. I already sat on one wet bench. I think it's quite enough for the moment. These buildings have so much character. They do, they do. Really gorgeous array of buildings. Not just your standard style that you see, even in original New York City buildings. They have a little bit more pizzazz.
Sharon says, can you imagine the rents? Yeah, they must be very expensive. Oh, it's about to rain harder. Everywhere looks so clean. It does. It really does. It really does 4K wander in a... Shulio, welcome. You have food, four blocks from food places. Okay, cool. Let's, let's see how things progress up Columbia River. Wow, look at this. So cool. Many similar buildings in Eastern Europe. Ooh, Judith, I don't know about that. Where in Eastern Europe? Maybe Budapest. And there's uh, water on my lens. All right. Oh, the rain is getting hard. Okay. Gotta put on my umbrella. What camera are you using? It says world. I'm using the iPhone Pro 11 Max to the extreme, super duper, transcendental iPhone. It's a really good phone. Very regal buildings. I assume because of its proximity to the embassy. Am I changing to the iPhone 12? I, I don't think I'll need to change in the meantime. Here's a Brazilian restaurant. This one has high reviews, haven't been here. But at least there's a Brazilian restaurant. That's awesome. Hey, just came back from my, uh, Facebook says, Joe, thank you for the top fan badge. My pleasure, Joe. It's automated, so the algorithm picks it. And that's because you've been commenting a lot. So thank you for commenting and sharing. Here's the Netherlands building. Ooh, beautiful. The grill from Impanema, yeah. <laughs> it's a play on words on the famous song. Oh, lapis, lapis, lapis. Beautiful. Um, I appreciate that they have their windows open. Some coffee and gelato. All right, let's try this out. Sorry about that. I'll have a uh, espresso, please. Uh, what's the smallest cup for gelato? Is that one? All right, let me see what flavors you have. I'll have a hazelnut, please. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Hey, can I uh, grab no. chair? Thank you. So the gelato is, was five dollars, or a little bit more, six, six dollars. Total of ten twenty for both the gelato and the espresso. So espresso might have been four, and the gelato might be six. <laughs> Different prices from Europe. <laughs> this is in Europe, but the espresso has a whole lot of crema, so it seems like a good, worthy cup of espresso. Mm. And it seems like the guy does not want to be there. No, no. He seems so bored out of his mind. So this seems to be another chain here in DC, but it looks pleasant. This espresso is very fragrant. Wow. Mm. Wet chair, yeah, wet chair. And someone left a super chat. Joe, thank you so much for the treat. I appreciate it, Joe, for a $5 super chat. I appreciate it. All right, so let's try this a random gelato spot. The first food spot we saw here in the neighborhood of Adams Morgan. I could use some coffee for this rainy day and might as well try the gelato as well. So let's try this out. Mmm. It's a worthy gelato. Yeah. It's creamy, but it's not like milky, overly milky. It's not sweet, overly sweet either. It's not American ice cream. This tastes like classic Italian gelato. And they had it covered with these pans, so, and not like a mountain of gelato, so it was not um, kind of Americanized, which is nice. So this, they seem to be started by some actual Italians, potentially, I'm assuming, due to how it was presented and the taste. It's called Pitango, Pitango gelato. And uh, this is the hazelnut flavor. And let's try the coffee before it gets too cold. Ooh. Very good coffee. Very warm. They somehow serve it pretty hot, but it's very good. Mmm. Very flavorful. Wow. Um, highly recommend it. Yeah. Not your favorite, your face is smoking. No, not my favorite, no. But it's a good cup of espresso. The the gelato also, not, not the best gelato I've ever had. Uh, my friends in Chelsea, Lolino sell better gelato. And B. Griffin just sent uh, a $10 for the gelato and the espresso. Thank you so much, B. Griffin. I appreciate it. So this is sponsored by B. Griffin and Joe. Thank you, Joe and B. Griffin, for sponsoring this. And we'll see if we'll bump into any more food. Hate to kill the buzz, but it would be nice if we could focus on this stream, says uh, 4K. Hmm. It's good. It's good. Service is a bit, you know, a bummer because the guy seemed like he hated everything yeah. about the very moment in time for him. I hope he feels better. Uh, but he did make a good cup of espresso. 
I'm gonna take a few more bites of this and then we'll continue walking around. So let me know if you have any questions. Kathy, welcome, nice to see you here. Total price for this food was $10.20. Mm. This coffee is really good. It's Italian style. It's not so punchy as some other places I've had in New York, but it's more Italian style than American style. Yeah. So in, in coffee speak, when I say Italian style versus American style, to me, I, if you drink coffee black, this is gonna be very hard if you're used to drinking coffee with sugar and milk. You're not, it's gonna be a bit more difficult tasting the spectrum. It's not some snooty thing that people who love coffee say, or people who love wine say. For example, wine, you know, if you drink it like mostly sangria or in cocktails, you're not gonna really taste the nuances of wine. The reason for that is, is because sugar itself numbs your tongue and its uh, ability to taste the nuances in flavor. Same thing with milk to a smaller extent. It does a similar effect. Uh, and it also numbs the, or at least coats your entire like uh, system with that substance so you don't taste and get that aftertaste. And that's why it's a little bit trickier with if you're used to milk and sugar. But if you're used to drinking coffee black, you have a spectrum. On one side, you have American style espresso, which is very good in some exceptional cities like New York. Boston had a few great places, um, but New York is a coffee city. And I haven't been to Seattle yet, but I assume there's also a few great places in Seattle and probably Portland as well. So you have American style. And then on the other side of the spectrum, you have Italian style. So Italian style is as strong, as punchy as Colombian, Puerto Rican, Cuban coffees, uh, Italian, you have um, other countries, let me know, like Vietnamese is another one that hits in that rank. So that's the spectrum. But in the middle you have a little bit stronger than American, you have places like Finland, you have um, Scandinavian countries, because I've been to Finland before and their coffee was just a tad punchier. And then you have other countries, maybe like uh, Ethiopian, Turkish coffee is a bit punchier than, than American. You have those countries. Also France, uh, kind of in after America, just a bit punchier, but not as strong as Italian. So that's the spectrum. But if you want to make the spectrum a little bit more vivid, at the very end would be like the super strong coffees, which would be like Naples specifically, Sicilian, Colombian and Cuban is really rough. Kenyan coffee, I haven't tried it yet. So that's why I mean about American. So American is light, bright, it's very vivid. Italian is punchier in your face, more stronger. So let me know where does your country hit in that spectrum? If you drink your coffee black, let me know. Only if you drink your coffee black without sugar, let me know. Where does it lie in that spectrum? Of course, you could drink coffee any other way. Totally, that's totally awesome. You do you. But if you really want to taste the, that full spectrum, you got to drink it black. Oh, you're talking about... Chris, you're mentioning... Kapi Luwak coffee which I've had before, it's really good. I've only had Vietnamese coffee with condensed milk. Yeah, Vietnamese coffee is so strong that they don't even serve regular milk with their coffee. They serve condensed milk with their coffee. It's extremely bitter coffee and it goes really well with condensed milk, which is already super strong on its own. And I have a strong Italian hand gesture, says Elisa. <laughs> mm. And how's the COVID situation in Washington, D.C.? Numbers are very, very low, uh, except for the White House, where they're having some issues, but numbers are very, very low. Nearby states are a little bit getting a little bit higher, but it's still pretty far. Virginia is okay, I think Maryland is okay, 
is just a little bit farther out. It starts getting a little bit more serious. So I, I feel safe here. I'm still not comfortable with dining inside unless the windows are fully open, like this restaurant next door that I showed you. If the windows are fully open, I feel comfortable. But if there's no windows open, I won't, I won't dine inside. Kona coffee is great. Greek coffee is on the Italian spectrum. Oh yeah. And he's from Seattle, by the way, says uh, Stephanie. Oh cool, who are you referring to, Stephanie? And you make me smile within 30 seconds of watching, says Susan. Oh cool, Susan, that's awesome. And I drink real macchiato in a tiny little cup. Is it the glass cup in Italy? That's awesome. And do you love God inside of you? Ooh, that's for another conversation. Um, American coffee is like beer. It's a lighter version. Yeah, beer also. You know, American beer is pretty pretty light. There's uh, now microbrews do get much stronger though. So American beer can be both very very light or it can be extremely strong. Generally in Germany, Europe, Central Europe, beer is kind of so, oh, pretty much similar. And of course, for the sake of conversation, there, there's a bunch of exceptions to these rules. These are not even rules. So it's a matter of speaking. There's uh, exceptions to these rules. And uh, just for the sake of conversation, we're just generalizing. We're kind of fitting things into models. It just helps us understand the world a little bit better. So, of course, there are always exceptions. So do your own research and have your own experiences. I always encourage it. Manhattan, three uh, food places to eat. Uh, world, ask me when I'm back in New York. Let's, let's stick with DC questions. Do I like coffee with rum? Here in, in DC, nor most in the US, it's hard to find coffee with alcohol. You have to go to certain cocktail bars, which I don't think DC has coffee cocktail bars. But would I have it? Yes, I enjoy coffee with rum. It's a good combination. One more bite, and then off to further into Adams Morgan. And by one, I mean two. Mm. I recommend this place, it's nice. What's my opinion on instant coffee? <laughs> I don't like it. I would not recommend drinking instant coffee. There's coffee is such a beautiful uh, area. So I really appreciate this restaurant for having windows open. I might return here on my own. But for now, let's go deeper inside Adams Morgan. Let's see what Adams Morgan is all about. It's about 48, yeah, about 48 degrees Fahrenheit. World says, Sarah or Tom, I do not pick between YouTubers. All YouTubers are awesome. Oh my God. Look at this store. Huh, they have some cool souvenirs. They have a little root RBG. Look at that. Oh, so cute. Such a cute RBG. Books. Oh, look at this pillow. Oh, it's really awesome. All right, I'm gonna go inside. So I'm gonna be silent, but enjoy it.
Jones or see what you were in the back? All right, this, this shop, this shop deserves more time. So Urban Dwell, it looks really good. Yeah, it looks really good. I would go inside, but it's a very tight space. So I, I would recommend if you're here in DC, just like first glance, it looks like an amazing souvenir shop. I would go inside, but it's, it's a very tight space. Uh, and I don't like going to tight spaces on live video. Just, you know, cause I'm carrying the camera and everything. <laughs> What street am I on? I should be still in Colombia. Oh, look at these old school restaurant signs. Nice selection says it saw me. Yes, I'll be returning there after the stream myself. Uh, but just first glance, I would give it a recommendation. You can tell a uh, good souvenir stop really quickly. Uh, the bad souvenir uh, places are the ones with very stereotypical shirts and kind of those basic Washington DC shirts or um, like the dolls of uh, George Washington you see basically everywhere. So there's places that have better souvenirs than others. Well, you don't see those stereotypical shirts and you see more books and more knickknacks, then it's usually a better store. Those signs were at least 20 years old, even more, I think. The signs that I just pointed out in neon, if they're neon, they're most likely from at least the, or at most the 1930s but they could be from the 60s, 50s, which they still use neon back then. There are newer restaurants that do use neon, but you can usually tell because uh, the modern technology for neon is much, much better. So you could do much more crazier designs. Museum gift sh uh, stores are great in DC. Yeah, most museums are closed, so I haven't been able to experience them, but from what I remember, I really love the gift shop at the Museum of Indian American. First American I know who drinks tea. I love tea. Are you referring to someone else in the comments? Oh, Judith, Judith, yeah, Judith only drinks tea. Ooh, okay, yes. We found the main street. Ladies and gentlemen, people of all genders, finally, we see a little bit of color over here in Washington, D.C. Color by the buildings and the murals that we're gonna see. Oh, you bought the... So nothing against the stereotypical shirts. Uh, it's not my personal preference. And I... I think... I would recommend... I would say... If you're traveling to interesting cities like Washington. Or any type of city. Consider... Buying a souvenir that's made from a... Mom and pop store. Or from an independent shop. Or from within the city. A lot of these stereotypical shirts, whatever they might be, uh, usually they're the ones with the huge name, Washington DC, or a very stereotypical image might be uh, the Statue of Liberty in New York, or here, the um, Washington Monument. Those shirts are fun, and I don't mean to say that they're bad or anything. I just mean to say that they're probably not made within the Washington DC. They're probably shirts made in China. That's okay. But it is awesome to support small businesses when you're traveling to a city. So you're here as a tourist, and of course it's awesome to be a tourist. But one way you can give back and not just take from your trips is to support those local businesses. So rather than just going to the Starbucks, go to that uh, coffee shop. That either might be fully independent. We already visited one yesterday, for example, the coffee lab in around U Street or they might be 
a local chain like we saw just right now with the gelato place. Same thing with bookstores. You can always go to a Barnes & Noble's, it's awesome. But if you're here, go to a nice little bookstore like this one, Lost City Books. Andrew, why do I live, why, why am I watching a live stream of DuPont Circle when I can walk outside my front door and see myself? <laughs> good question, good question. So let me know what you think about giving back when you're traveling to places. Look at this bookstore. Wow, beautiful. Uh, Hey, how's it going?
What a wonderful bookstore. Have a good day. Wow, wow, wow. That bookstore is a little piece of heaven. Oh, wow, I am blown away. And they have so many cool books in there. I will 100% be coming back because someone very close to me has a very big birthday coming up. And uh, I pointed it out to the book that I might be boy buying because they like those types of books. So uh, I'll be coming back here into that other souvenir as well. Highly recommend Lost City Books. That tote bag is gorgeous as well. That design of the steps going into the moonlight. It's almost very reminiscent of the DC Metro. Best bookstore I've seen in the city so far. Best, best, best. Absolutely blown away. Let's continue walking around. Let's see what else we end up finding on this journey. And let me know, what book would you buy if you're here? Uh, or whenever you go to a, a bookstore in another city, what, what type of books do you buy? As, a, as many people say in the comments, I am indeed a bookworm. I love my books. I'm constantly reading, I'm constantly buying books. Uh, the souvenirs I end up buying are books. <laughs> so, I love my books. Oh wait, I'm 100% coming back here after this live stream. I, I work in a convenience store in Sheffield. Oh, Brendan, cool. I actually follow a, a, a TikToker who's in Sheffield. I love his jokes about Sheffield. Uh, it's so cool that you work over there. Let me see you read. You said, we got a few books that sell a little book sale going on. Oh, cool that you have a little uh, bookstore in your area. You probably have a huge smile under that face. Oh, I do. You can see in my eyes if you look close enough. All right, so here's another coffee house. Let's see what this is about. Coffee house volume amount. The risk. Oh, wow, nice. Also, here you might be able to find a coffee cocktail here in Thrist because it's a bar and a coffee house. Biographies would be for Benjamin. Oh, cool, Benjamin. Stairs and books leading to moonlight. Yes, that design is amazing. Oh, the stairs, I think, was made out of books. Yeah, oh my God, that's so cool. All right, might be back for a tote bag. Tote bag is another... Tote bag is probably the second most souvenir I end up getting, uh, but they have to be very unique tote bags, and usually they're of bookstores. For example, when I went to London, I bought a tote bag of Daunt books. Oh, the real original jumbo slice. This is the real original jumbo slice. Shall we try it? Shall we try? I'll let people vote. Uh, DC isn't known for that many types of food, uh, but one of the foods, aside from mumbo sauce, uh, they're known for their gigantic pizzas, which they have a few of them. And Brendan, who's the guy who does TikTok on Sheffield? I don't know who he is. Uh, Brendan, do comment at the end of this video, not, not on the live chat, but comment on it. I'll put the link of his, of his uh, thing in, in the reply to a comment. So comment on this video after the, the thing is done. I do not know, ask them first. Uh, I would buy that book store's tote bag if I were there. I love tote bags. Yeah, Stephanie, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna buy that tote bag. Especially that blue one. I showed, I think, the, the more um, brighter one, but that blue one looked very nice. Do I like Japanese anime or cartoons? Uh, yes, I do, but I don't read too much an uh, manga. Uh, basically, anime, I don't watch too much anymore, but my favorite was Death Note, top anime ever. All right, let's try this out. Let's see what this is about. Uh, on second thought, no pizzas on display, can't see the kitchen, it looks a bit weird, uh, so I'm going to give it a skip, uh, let me know on your thoughts 
about approaching a pizza place where you can't see anything, just a counter. It's a bit weird. Uh, so let's move on. Let's see if we find some other interesting food. It looks better in the uh, outside, yeah. Oh yeah, it looks a little bit weird. Don't trust it. If I can't see anything, not even a pizza, not even a, a photo of it, not, nothing. Uh, I'm not about Beautiful shops around here. And I love that they put art murals on the roadblocks as well. Sharon says, uh, right choice, yeah. I love that the pigeons are flying up right above us. Oh, old sky bridge. Rona, do I like Sailor Moon? I, I don't, I, I had never really watched the show nor read the books. But I do make a reference to it in my uh, novella. Oh, this is the place I wanted to try out. Yes. Okay, everyone. Who wants some gluten-free bakery? Rise Bakery. This is one of the uh, top bakeries rated in this neighborhood. Let's try it out. Hey, how's it going? Good. Good. Yeah. Awesome, yeah, let me see what you have. What's the favorite for this place? Okay, sure. Popular. Yeah. If you're looking for sweets, the eclair and cheesecake are really good. Oh, cool. What's the eclair stuffed with? Uh, pastry cream. Pastry cream, alright, awesome. In that case, I'll try the pumpkin cheesecake. You know what, actually, okay. instead of the pumpkin, I'll have the vegan carrot cake instead. The vegan carrot cake? Yeah. The cupcake. Yeah. Anything else for you? That's all. Okay. Okay. Who's next? 
All right. Awesome thinking. Okay, just check that out for me, make sure it's all correct. Just no tip, yeah. Do you want a receipt? Uh, yes, please. Thank you. Did you want to back it up? Uh, no, it's all right. Thank you so much. Yeah, Have a good day. Alright, that was quite a way. <laughs> they seem to be very busy. Uh, let's see. Okay. <laughs> Another jumbo pizza shop, but this one's closed. <laughs> Alright, let's try it out. So, do the. Hey, how's it going? So, do the cupcake wars continue? Let's see. I think in every single major world conflict may be a war that has ravaged the world. Sometimes some conflicts never truly end. Sometimes the war just stops being a hot war and it get, goes into being a cold war. Proxy wars are then fought between other bakeries. The cupcake war we thought ended, but it continues today where a new player has been introduced, a vegan, gluten-free, dairy-free, soy and nut-free cupcake to try to take hold of power after the Great Cupcake Wars. We thought it was the Great Cupcake War to end all wars, but this one decided to compete for supremacy. Let's try it out. It's interesting. It definitely tastes vegan. It's a bit dry, but good. The cream is dairy free, but tastes just like a good cream cheese, a cream cheese frosting. Mmm. has a very um, grainy appearance, a uh, grainy texture to it. But it's really, really good. This will not win against Alexandria in a head-to-head -head battle. This is like the Spain of cupcakes during World War II, or Maybe we'll use an ally power instead. This is like the New Zealand of World War II. It fought, it fought very bravely, fought very hard. But what quite didn't get all the glory. That's this cupcake of the Great Cupcake Wars. It's a good cupcake. It's a worthy cupcake. It's a cupcake that truly deserves your attention, especially if you're vegan or gluten-free. This cupcake will be the number one cupcake if you're gluten free or vegan. If you're not, Alexandra still takes the cake. And I think this concludes the great cupcake wars of 2020. Hopefully one day we will see a monument on the National Mall of this cupcake war. And Tony says, am I scared? Am I scared because of the cupcake wars? <laughs> not quite. <laughs> I'm actually looking forward, uh, but of the neighborhood? No, not, not so much. I feel, I feel very safe in this neighborhood. Mm. Excellent cupcake. Give it 
solid recommendation. If you're vegan, gluten-free, this is great. If you're someone who uh, is a bit limited in terms of uh, eating sugar or consuming uh, too much fat, this also is a good choice. So I would recommend this. This is a good, good, healthy cupcake. This is... Mm. And it's dairy free. So the cream cheese frosting is extremely well done. You'll be able to taste the difference between vegan, uh, gluten free with the cake. The cake is grainier in texture. I'm not entirely sure what flour they're using. They're not using almond, it seems like it, because luckily I am not getting allergies, which is nice. I'm allergic to almonds, so I try to avoid almond flour cakes. I should have asked, <laughs> but I took the risk. Like in all great wars, we must take risks. Uh, but with the cream cheese frosting, it is, oh, you put that in the blind test, I think, you won't be able to tell the difference. You won't be able to tell the difference. It's a really, really well-made vegan cream cheese frosting. And it's not just lazy sugar frosting. It tastes like a cream cheese frosting. I'm not sure how they did it, but it tastes really good. Mm. Wow, mm. I feel satisfied. I'm liking this neighborhood. Thanks for the acknowledging NZ's role in the Allied victory. Yes, my pleasure. Drop my water bottle. My pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. Not all countries, unfortunately, get the glory. And this one, as I mentioned, won't get the glory, but it's a worthy cupcake. Highly recommend and luckily I'm right by the garbage stand, so right here it goes. All right, let's continue walking through, but I'm going to sanitize my hands. And we're gonna explore, I think we only have one block left. So if you have any last remaining questions, I think I'll be live for about, seems like maximum 15 minutes. So if you have any last remaining questions, feel free to ask. I appreciate everyone tuning in. Um, can actually see you gaining weight on this trip. You see me gaining weight? <laughs> Does it look like I gained weight? <laughs> I hope I walked enough and not gained too much weight. I, I've been eating more than usual on this trip though. So that is true. That is true, Don. All right, sanitizing hands. And then we're gonna walk around and go to the end. And the cool thing is it seems like we have a view from over here. Susan says, no, I don't look like a game weight. I've been eating a lot, but it's because DC is a heavy, heavy walking city. So I've been eating a lot because of the, of the walk. Um, DC is a bit hard to go via subway close to where you're going. Adams Morgan, for example, is about a 15 minute walk or more to the nearest Metro. Same thing with Georgetown. And uh, there is buses, but the buses don't pass so super frequently. So that's why it is a bit farther away. And is everyone wearing masks? Yes, outside they are. It is pretty empty, so I'm not using a bunch of masks uh, right now because it is a bit cold and my glasses get a little bit foggy, but we only have one more block. And just in case we bump into a, one more last shop, I'll put on my mask just in case. Where are you going tomorrow? I don't know, Gail. Gail. I don't announce my broadcast ahead of time. Um, oh, actually, I do. In this case, I do. 3 p.m. I'll be doing a special broadcast at the Museum of American History. You can watch that. 1 p.m. I'll be live for something else. Uh, sometimes I announce them, but very rarely I do. So stay tuned. 3 p.m. There'll be a, a bonus broadcast of the American History Museum for our very last uh, time.
Elisa says you lost a lot of weight, indeed. <laughs> Comparatively, from my career of doing live streams. You don't look, get, or big. You're fine as you are. Oh, thank you, Brendan. I appreciate the compliment. Yes, indeed. Convict, what is, what is this? Well, we just bumped into a live stream where we eat, explore, and have fun. I appreciate YouTube showing me to random people. That's so awesome. I'm in Adams Morgan neighborhood. And it, this is an LGBT neighborhood, judging by all the flags we've seen in many of the businesses. No wonder this neighborhood is so bright, vibrant. If you are in uh, any Western country, usually the LGBT neighborhoods are very great places to eat and find food and for tiny little shops. That is the case in New York. That is the case in Paris. That is the case in London. Doesn't mean you have to be LGBT. I do understand every cu culture has their, their different preferences, uh, but that, that's just a pro tip I have, is usually LGBT neighborhoods have great, great food and array of shops. Peruvian cuisine, oh, right in the middle. Lorraine says, I look well proportioned. Oh, cool. I'm glad I look well proportioned. It's awesome. Vlad, you can ask me any questions about history, food, or travel. Philly, too, has a gay neighborhood. What's, what's the L LGBT neighborhood of? LGBTQ plus neighborhood of Philly. Okay, so I gotta cross the street and show you the view. Every neighborhood is welcoming if you're not paranoid about yourself. Yeah, of course. Uh, but there is a certain um, prevalence for LGBT neighborhoods being very interesting food wise. Look at that. The Washington Monument from a distance. Enjoy going back to that bookstore. Uh, so let's go two more blocks. We'll see how it looks downhill. And I will be bidding all of you adieu. Oh, Ethiopian cuisine. What time do you guys open? At four. Four? Okay, cool. So this Ethiopian place opens up at four. That's awesome. They have outdoor seating. Cool. And ev hello everyone, first time here. It's a great well, good walk. Thank you, Muriel. I'm so glad you're enjoying it. Feel free to ask me any last minute questions. Rapid fire, last two minutes. If I missed anything, ask again. And I can't see you now anymore because my Glasses are completely fogged up. <laughs> Let me wait the camera the other way. Maybe, beaver, maybe. Just stay tuned. So, this neighborhood is in conjunction with U Street. There's an intersection, I think, a little bit further down. So you can combine New Street if you are uh, comfortable with walking quite a bit. There is a little bit of uh, uphill walking, but it is a very good neighborhood, I think, to explore. I think Adams Morgan is probably the most neighborhood feel you'll get along with U Street. Those two neighborhoods, probably the best neighborhoods. Uh, and Georgetown, so those are the top three neighborhoods to visit. In Washington DC from my experience here if anyone has any more recommendations if they're a local or have been here many times do let us know it seems like we have ended there might be a few more spattering of shops a little bit down but this is the main area and I'll post a huge Google Maps of all the places I've mentioned with food or coffee so stay, stay tuned for that I'll be at the end of my trip I'll post a Google Maps link on both YouTube and on Facebook
and there's some vintage stores. I'm gonna walk into the store afterwards. Everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, I, uh, oh, let me answer a few questions because I said I was gonna answer any questions. Here is the, the Black Heritage Trail. I'm calling it Black Heritage Trail. That's not the real name for it, uh, but it's called the Adams Morgan Tra Heritage Trail. But this is one of the stops. Oh, cool. This is a different one. U Street has one, and this one has another one. Oh, oh, this is so cool. There's some history here. That's awesome. I wish the guidebooks would mention this, but they only mention a tiny little paragraph of these places. How walkable is DC? DC is not as walkable as New York. So if you're someone who can't, uh, is unable to walk for long distances, I would recommend renting yourself a car. Yeah, or using Uber if you have, if you can afford it. Depends on your affordability. And let me see if any, I'll cross the street and answer any last remaining questions. Uh, thank you, says Mary. Great tour, says Banal, thrifty. Indeed, yes, duh, know what you meant, says Stephanie. 285 uh, at the end. Guess the three vehicles in every travel video you do, Sharon. Ooh. For me, I, you, I rarely use car, unless if I go to places like Maine, which I did uh, about two years ago. Check out those videos on Facebook. I use mostly ferry, metro, and bus. That's what I use when I travel. Is there a, a public bathroom map? I don't know. I don't know. There probably is. Uh, search restrooms also on Google Maps and you'll probably find something. And in the pandemic, it's a bit hard to go to the bathroom. Coffee shops that tend to close their bathrooms, which is a shame. So it's a bit tricky. I'm not entirely sure what would be the best bathroom tip. I've been just going back to my Airbnb <laughs> or, or going to the restaurant I end up going to. And um, thanks to all the nurses, uh, let me watch the live. Elisa, do feel better. Again, hearts for Elisa. Uh, B. Griffin was recovering from something. Um, and Kay as well. So everyone uh, who was going through some um, trials and tribulations health-wise. I do wish you the best. And can I add you uh, on Facebook? I don't accept personal friend requests. Always feel free to follow my personal content though. I do post writings. But otherwise you can uh, message me via Urbanist Facebook and I'll do my best to respond. And UPS FedEx in the back. And thank you for this interesting tour. Bathroom tip, find the franchise hotel. Easier said than done, Chris. Good tip. Easier said than done here in uh, DC. It's a bit, it's a bit difficult. Not too many big chains here, and during the pandemic, they do close their bathrooms. And let me see if I missed any last questions. So Brendan, uh, comment at the end. I'll put the link to the Sheffield TikToker. Very hilarious. Admos known for their international restaurants. Yes, I see a lot of them. Euclid. We'll take you down to Meridian Hill Park. Ooh, awesome. Perfect. So Meridian Hill Park, a lot of people recommend it. Check it out. And is there a motorcade? Uh, I think we saw a motorcade the other day. Probably was the EVP. I missed the whole video. It says Veronica. Oh, Veronica, you got to watch the uh, replay. But you were doing early voting. Cool. Awesome. Julio, thank you. Brendan, Bernal, Nomographer, Elisa, everyone, Tina, everyone else. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you, everyone, who's been supporting ron for a big big star for supporting laureen as well hasami k big stars for you guys for giving a contribution more than 50 dollars. i really appreciate it and to everyone who's become a supporter recently and the patron as well tom has become a new patron thank you so much keep being awesome and always keep on exploring see you one more last day tomorrow in washington dc 1 p.m and then the short one at three have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a great day.